Great relationships don't just happen. They're designed. Why leave love to chance when you can make strategic decisions in your relationship just like you do in your career? The days of settling for mediocre are over. Welcome to the Project Relationship Podcast. I'm Dr. Jolie Hamilton. And I'm Ken Hamilton. Join us as we explore the decisions and choices that make relationships work no matter what life throws your way. It's time to reimagine relationships from the ground up. Welcome to Project Relationship. Hi, and welcome to the Project Relationship Podcast. I'm Dr. Jolie Hamilton. I'm Ken Hamilton. And we're going to talk today about taking a break from each other. Together? <laughs> together. We're going to talk <laughs> about it together. But we're going to talk about taking a break from each other because all this togetherness yeah. can be um, a little too much sometimes. It's been a very cloistered year. It has. And even when it hasn't been a cloistered year... Sometimes I find that as we have gotten closer, we forget to make space to be apart. Yeah, it, I, I find myself uh, inclined to chase you around rather than chase me around at all. Say like, more right <laughs> now. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, I... Um, uh, my particular set of, of stuff in my life leads me to avoid pinning down my wants. Let's we I could Your just start wants. there. My personal me wants. Um, I mean, my wants like I want to go mow the lawn. Wants like really small ones, and um, and I avoid claiming them by. Um, by supplanting them with a larger want that really is a want, which is to spend time with you and do things with you. And, and then I don't go pursue things that would um, make me happy separately and possibly even grow me as a person. Who would have thought? You know, I think that's really interesting because when we first got together, I didn't think... I thought that I was the more codependent-ish kind of person. I thought oh, that I honey. wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that I wanted to to just be completely subsumed in our relationship, um, even though that's what we that is not what we said we were doing. Right, we talked about not doing that. We did, but and... I felt like it was a real threat for me. And yet, as the years have had their way with us, it has become more and more obvious that you struggle to do things for yourself. Yep. Do you struggle to take the time for yourself? And even more than that, you struggle just to say that you like different things. <laughs> yes, I do. I have I mean, in made so tiny <laughs> progress in that lately. I can feel the difference where I will claim things that I sometimes know that, oh, there was a time when I wouldn't have said this. Thing. Yeah. So I wanted to talk about taking a break from each other together because it's been important for me to establish that I need breaks from you mm -hmm. for my own reasons and for those, you know, to not practice old patterns of, of like enmeshment and being all yeah. tangled up with each other so deeply that we couldn't even tell who was who. Yeah. So wanting to pry that apart, but also because I want to be curious about myself. Yeah. And I want to be curious about my friendships and I, I want I want to be curious about the children independently, individually and all that. And I, I want to have time and space for that. And it takes some intentionality. It certainly does for me. I We I, both work a lot. Yeah. So it takes some intentionality to make some space that's not for work, but also isn't the two of us all tangled up together. And I feel like... Back in the day, am I right about this? I, I'm not sure. When we were first together, this didn't seem like it was a problem. You very easily walked away. You, oh, yeah. You very, very easily spent time alone and on your own. For the first several years, you you seemed easeful with that. What changed? Um, I started judging myself. <laughs> um, For what? For 
well, that, that's not the question I was expecting. So it'll take a minute to um, to shift myself over. It's a good question. So what changed? Oh, so one thing that changed was I let myself feel fully my um, my love and desire for you. Mm. And then I felt like I had wasted a bunch of time that I could have been spending with you and oh, learning like about you and getting to know you. Time. And so by by doing those things by myself, I wasn't engaging in that that magical beginning part of a relationship where um, you explore each other and the new relationship energy and stuff like that. And um, and then I I sort of got into the habit of prioritizing time with you. Which I really appreciated. And and I felt that, um, and then I got a sort of existential, panic is a strong word, but it's only a little bit strong. This existential panic of, I'm not going to get to spend enough time with you. Mm. And so I, uh, I, I push other things aside so that I don't miss time with you. FOMO. Fear of missing out. Uh-huh. Okay. I I'm starting to mature past that driving the show. It is it's it's useful information that I can use, but I don't have to respond to that as the only only resolving concept for right. any. Okay, so this though moment. this is balanced now with years where yes. you have spent a large amount of your energy um, trying to be right with me and and even tagging along on my coattails quite a bit as I've gone out yes. to explore the world uh -huh. and um, figure out what I'm doing and study and open new businesses and things. And it feels like the pen, it's a pendulum, like that it's swaying, wait, swang, swang, swung, swing, 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 <laughs> it swinged, um, that the pendulum had swung far over um, from from not spending time together and prioritizing really anything that that wasn't me to swinging all the way over to close to enmeshment. It was yeah, it, it was, was getting definitely. very cloying. Um, and I think we were just starting to find a little bit of balance, or at least I thought we were before the before the pandemic made us have to spend all of our time together. Yeah, and I didn't. I didn't know that this is what we were going to talk about today, but I have a day off, which is not that common for me. I work a lot um, by choice. I like my work a lot. Um, and I find you, yep, kind of at my heels, like right, right there wanting to hang out. And what I worry about is this. Are you doing what you want to? Because I want us to both have the opportunity to be separate enough in all the different ways, in our work ways, in our in our casual spending time together ways, I want us to have a sense of togetherness even when we're apart. Yeah. Because I want to see what you bring back to me. That's it. I have noticed. And I think the quarantine how, made that harder. How uninteresting I become when I spend all my time with you. It's hard to bring new things new new topics of conversation new ideas hard to bring them to you so yeah. that we have something new to to experience if i'm right with you all the time right and you have talked about how you don't find your work to be as um it is technically stimulating but it's not it's not it doesn't inspire interesting relating way. for the two of us yeah it's and so we sometimes have conversations about it but I, there's a limit to my own technical knowledge of what you do as a software developer that negates us having deeper conversations whereas my work when we talk about the things i'm writing or what i'm studying you can always enter into that. There's a there's, there's a, a humanness of, to it, just yeah, a, like a general human experienceness. Experience that I can bring, even if it's not at the depth that you're working at. I can. Yeah, you join engage. me there. Plus, I'm not real shy about talking about things I don't know about. So, <laughs> getting better all the time. Some... Getting better all the time. I think it's been really interesting to see how the pandemic and the the like having to be in the same space together has made it very obvious that we have to practice being able to be engaged 
outwardly, to be curious in the bigger world intentionally. Mm -hmm. intentionally because it's not yeah. enough. Even being not monogamous is not enough to inspire the space yeah. because anything can happen. It turns out anything, turns can, out happen, anything can happen. And that anything includes being all locked up together and not having a lot of new stuff. So I was thinking about what it um, what it means to take a break from each other, to just make a little bit of space. I think people hear taking a break in a relationship instantly. Well, at least in our Gen X yeah. population, we instantly think of Ross and Rachel on Friends. Of course. <laughs> we were on a break. Um, but that's not the kind of break I'm talking about. I'm talking about a break from each other so that we can go explore other stuff yeah other i think topics, when, other ideas yep when you said that i thought of and so what were you thinking of? let me ask you this what were you thinking of when you hear take a break together because i mean we i we, think we about coming to a collective agreement with you about hey let's go do other things mm -hmm. and instantly i thought oh that needs that needs a a big asterisk after it because i don't want this to be an open ended break forever uh, nothing's wrong everything's great yeah um I, but i do want to be able to go explore a little bit and to have long enough for my thoughts to develop yeah. not you know not just like from morning till night but maybe even a, a few days some time for my thoughts to develop and percolate so that I can come to you with something really that feels internally generated. And we used to have those breaks built in. Yeah. Um, I had to travel for school, for conferences, things like that. Mm. Um, we had some of those times. Oh, that's really interesting. We don't have that anymore. Because I, I But was... I do think that asterisk means I want to know when the break is over <laughs> too. Yeah. So um this is a diff different conversation than I thought we were going to have too, because when you said that, I was thinking smaller. Like, oh, okay, so this afternoon I will make sure that I'm doing doing something else. And for me, it means not just working, but doing something that interests me so that I'm bringing something back. Well, just so that I'm, I'm, a, Following I'm your being passion. myself. And then you get to see who I am when I do that. Um, but I hear you talking about a, a wider ranging thing, which is intriguing. Um, and I can absolutely see the benefits to that. Yeah. I was thinking that when I, when I enter into creative mode, I often will need a couple of days to let something build, to let something become. And so this isn't so much about whether we have to be out of each other's space. Mm -hmm. Um, because what I'm thinking about is, well, we, I don't know. Like we, we can't really take a ton of breaks right now. Just the way that our life is set up, it's hard to take physical breaks from each other. But, but I don't, I don't think we've talked very much about how it could be that the boundaries of what we talk about could create the break too. Like you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna go into this Ooh. project and and I'm gonna go into it. I'm gonna delve into it. And I'm not gonna talk to you about it for a while. I'm gonna let it percolate. Let it be mine. Okay. Explore it so that it can become yeah. all on its own. And we have had maybe two times through your doctoral program that I remember you saying, "I just, I'm gonna just go into this and I'm not gonna talk about it for yeah. a little while." Um. And that seemed to work really well for you. It does. I am by nature an extroverted person. I I think, I especially in particular, I am extroverted thinking. So I tend to talk my ideas out. Yeah. And I don't want to set that aside. But I'm also noticing lately that there's something missing. And that missingness seems to be that I need, I need to allow my thoughts to coalesce. I need to I need to let some things really take form. It's um it's reminding me the word coalesce, right? It comes from like making a coal, right? Making a coal. Making a yep. coal out of a bringing the powder together into a, a a solid cohesive mass. Yeah, that's what I need. There are sparks all over me right now. I I'm making uh -huh. sparks like wildfire. That's great, but I'm not coalescing. Yeah. And part of why might be that I I send off all these sparks to you, to my friends, to pe like boom, 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 and I forget to let them come together, come in, together in me, 
to form something. Now I do happen to be looking at a picture of a Phoenix and Phoenix is my yeah. nickname. So it's possible that I'm on a fire trend, but it's not that I want time apart from you so much as, wow, I just noticed I need some time with me. Well, um, so I can't, I don't know what would have to happen for me with my psychology to notice that that's what I need. Um, but what you're saying sounds like a really good idea. It's funny. Both for me personally and for us. Yeah. Hmm. It's funny to me because I am extroverted and I don't think about myself as needing a lot of alone time. And I'm technically introverted, but my God, am I chatty. <laughs> <laughs> that is very true. So one of my needs here is that I need some time to allow myself to coalesce. And I like now having grabbed that word and I, I'm writing it down and I, I'm feeling into the word, like, oh, allow myself the time to make the fire. Yeah. I watched you in our very early um, pre-dating days and dating days. You were teaching yourself how to make friction fire. Yeah. You were teaching yourself how to use a bow drill. And I would watch you patiently attempt to make fire from friction. And sometimes it worked great and other times it was really hard. Um, but I spent several, maybe even dozens of afternoons <laughs> you watching seen you that a lot. do that. Yeah. And... I remember back then thinking that it was beautiful. It was beautiful in its simplicity. It was so, you were just there and you had one purpose because you can't focus on anything else. A bow drill fire no, requires work. you to you gotta be right there, be there physically. And mm -hmm. I, it feels like, like spiritually, yeah, like you yeah. have to really be there with that process in order to get the, get that spark to coalesce into a coal that can then be kindled into a flame. Yeah. But then I watched you cook dinners over that, that flame that you made from the mo motion of your own body. It, it was nothing short of miraculous. I loved watching it. And that it's funny that that's the image that's coming that is, to mind. That's because interesting. That's also one of the things I can imagine you spending time doing. Yeah, well, that's just what I was now. just thinking. So you're taking that concept and using it for the things that you want to make happen. And the thing is, you are creating um, complex, chaotic, fiery things that, um, yeah, it, it the metaphor really works for me, for what you're So doing. what I wrote down when we started are, what is taking a break? So I'm, mm -hmm. I'm getting from both of us. Taking a break could mean a lot of things. So I'm going to say taking a break really requires clear definition. Yes. Because I have taken a break from you before where I said I need to physically be apart from you long enough so that I can gather my thoughts and come back to you clear, right. feeling clear. But yep. that's not, for me, this isn't that particular kind of break. This is more like a creative break. Yeah. That's what I'm hearing. And so the question is, Taking a break from what? Right. Sometimes it's physical presence. We we go away. So break from, from each what? other, but not that. If it's not that, what is it? And then for what? And for what? So yeah. from what and for what? And the mm -hmm. from what is a, co a collective decision we can make. Yeah. About so let's. Well, I mean, I could easily say so. Why don't you go camping? Go go camping for a couple of days, and and that gives me that's the from what the from what at that point is physical. Right. I I actually have space, but the for what is mine. That's right. For it'll be you'll have a four and I'll have a four. Right. Mm -hmm. For what? I for what and from not, which sound very funny when I say them like that. <laughs> for what and from what? And then what are my needs exactly? So when we've had breaks in the past. I haven't always been clear about what my own needs are. Often I was just trying to stop something from happening. And sometimes the break is to get time to figure out what your needs are. Right. You know, there's just too much input and you need to, to just stop for a second, separate space. and be able to look in and see what's going on. Yeah. But I do know that there's one thing and this, I, this would go under tips and tricks. Okay. <laughs> um, I think anytime you're going to take a break, 
it's a good idea to set up when you're coming back. And that that's, that's not just physically, but energetically. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, I learned that many years ago at this point that, that the trick to having disagreements or to you know, like dealing with a, getting flooded during an argument, whatever it was, the trick was to say, I need a break and I'll be back. And so this is me officially saying, so I, I need to take an energetic break to go coalesce my ideas mm -hmm. and, and I'll be back. I'll be back on Friday at the latest and possibly a little before. And so now we talk about what the from is. Yeah. Cause that's, that's important. Cause here we are living in the same house and right. um, working in the same spaces, in the same space. And, and with some of those things can be shifted and with shared responsibilities and, and um, just about all of it can be managed if we know what the goal is. Right. Right. Um, and we have college students living in the house who have finals over the next couple of yeah. weeks. And there's stuff going on. That means that we need to make a plan in order for that kind of thing to work. So the only, and then the third thing that came up for me is deal breakers. What are the deal breakers? Now I bring that up because a when we talk about taking a break, yeah, often people's minds go to taking a break, meaning we no longer have our relationship agreements intact. Okay. And I just want to be clear. That's, that's not what not I'm talking what about. I have in mind. I'm so. talking about taking a break from the banality from the every day from the way that we practice doing our relating every day. But I am not talking about setting down our relationship agreements. It sounds like it could be really powerful. And it could also be just a simple rest. But it could also be pretty powerful sometimes. Interesting. So when I think oh. about our relationship agreement, so we don't have a monogamy agreement, but we do have plenty of agreements about how we spend our time and how we will be physically responsible to each yep. other, um, like how we will engage in safer sex and how we will um, responsibly handle each other's feelings around mm -hmm. other partners and even friendships. So I see this kind of energetic um, dynamic taking a break as, okay, all of that relationship agreement stuff, all the work we've done, all the, all the times we've written in our shared book, in our relationship agreement book yep. together. That's all intact. And this sits on top of it as a, yeah, a retreat, mm -hmm. a retreat yeah. um, without any um, negation of my responsibilities to you, my, right. the responsibilities that I have, have given to you willfully, gladly, but it feels real. It does feel powerful. I feel some, I feel a little, yeah. like a little electric yeah, inside. Like, uh, okay, I have needed this and I didn't know how to say it. I think I've been letting the circumstances dictate the fact that we're just here together and there's no way out yeah, of it. And I think it's come up in sort of offhanded ways, but we never pursued it. Yeah, and well, now that we're talking about it. Offhanded ways that lead me to be like, yeah, right. <laughs> because I get overwhelmed <laughs> yep. and yeah. Um, and so it takes a little setup because like you said, it would actually be simple to just say, okay, abandon the relationship agreement. That's easy. Keeping it in place and deciding what we're doing to do something different is going to be more complicated. And I'm, I'm very excited for the complication that that is. So our relationship agreement is designed to be dynamic yes, and to be able to withstand earthquakes. That's what we, yes. we designed it yep. intentionally for. And we've talked about relationship agreements before, but it might be worth revisiting that. But I would say that in this case, the, the clarity for me is the relationship agreement actually becomes even more strengthened in this moment. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like it's brought to the it's forefront. To, we to look visibility. at it and say, yeah. hey, we have agreements that we have made to each other. For instance, I handle our financial obligations. Please keep doing that. <laughs> I will do that. I happen to do that every week on Thursday. And so even if I'm taking time for myself, I'm doing that. That And that's my responsibility. But it's also something I'm, I'm responsible to you for. Yep. And I take care of, even while we're talking about the practical, I take care of the... Um, the errands and making sure we have groceries and things like that. Thank and I God, because I am so not an errands person. And, and I will continue doing that. Okay. Um, if the time came that I would needed a break from that, we would 
talk about that. Right, because there are ways to do that. Including that don't even mean that I have to take children. <laughs> right. That's right. That mean I don't necessarily have to do errands. I don't I mean we so have children errands. with licenses like dog licenses. But I mean they have driver's licenses. <laughs> They are, well, they, we are getting more and more licensed children all the time. Yes. Um, okay. So here's my proposal then. My proposal is that we take a break in order to allow us each to have some creative energy coalesce in some way with yeah. the goal to be to have something to bring back to share. Interesting. And so, and then... I'm going to express my gratitude right now, but I, I can't imagine that I wouldn't want to express it at the end of this either. So thanks for being game. I mean, I, I know we were walking up the stairs and I was like, let's record something. <laughs> you were like, okay. But we were going to do this on Tuesday. <laughs> okay. Apparently I needed a break badly. <laughs> <laughs> but the break, the break must happen. Okay. Well, I am, I am grateful for you pursuing this deeper um than what i was imagining i think that's really interesting i've always been a bit less risk averse than you well i was going to mention that earlier when we were talking about me you know tagging along behind you you are less risk averse but i am game you are i will are i will totally do almost game. anything you will he'll try anything once if 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 it <laughs> looks like somebody else oh i use your uh -oh. judgment Oh, sure. I use your judgment about what is risky. And actually, I made that decision consciously quite a while ago. Now that I After think about it. After making a lot of bad decisions. <laughs> For, <laughs> yes. Yes. And uh, that, that we could talk about that. That could be another podcast that is, topic, actually. That's an interesting topic. Um, but anyway, because... yes. So thank you for for diving into this and fleshing it out a little more. And I am really excited to... Um, to do that, to talk about what the parameters of this are, what we're talking okay. about. Okay. So I'm going to sum it up though, for everybody, anybody who wants to play along at home, um, define what you're taking a break from mm -hmm. and then define for yourself what you're taking a break for. Um, and what you it, mean the goal right there, right? For, like, yeah. What, what's mm -hmm. it for? Yeah. And that might be something you share and might not, but the from needs to be shared. Define what your deal breakers are. What's your relationship agreement currently? And is this, uh, if you're doing anything that steps outside of that, okay, well, make sure you at least check in about what your deal breakers are. So you can you have think the, of an example of a deal breaker for yeah. a, a break deal breaker? So I could imagine on some other year saying, I'm going to take a break for myself to go to Burning Man. Okay. And I could imagine you saying, so cool, what does that do about our safer sex agreement? Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, I see. And wanting some clarity around that. Yeah. Because usually I get to know someone pretty well before that becomes an issue. So right? So yeah. so okay. I just mean that level of All right. yeah. also um deal breakers, how much money are you gonna spend? How much like are we like does this need to if 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 one of us is going to go to a hotel room just to have space or get away for a few like what is that going to be? We may need to negotiate what it looks like, what's reasonable for us right now. Yeah. Yeah, I see. Okay, yep. And then um yeah, some tips tell each other when you're going to come back energetically. Uh, so even I would if say that's not so much a tip as if you don't do that ouch. You've got a you're you're building a problem for yourself. Okay. I think. Yeah, I think so too. Especially because you tend not, you have tended not to do that and it has caused big problems. It has. <laughs> it's been large yikes. Yep. So define, defining what your deal breakers are and then saying when you're going to come back. Mm -hmm. Even, and I think this is going to be even more important for us because I don't think we're going to physically take a break right? just because of how the week is set up. I don't think that's really possible for us. So it's going to happen in the context of our life. So this is a creative separation more than anything. And so I'm going to do this with the goal of coming back with something I've learned, something new to share with you. And I, I have a ton of gratitude for you just even being willing to entertain it. I'm not sure yet what my goal is. So I don't, I don't think, think I'm going to come up with it know. in the next 58 seconds. So <laughs> I don't totally know what mine is either, but I can feel it. I can, it's like I can feel new sparks just nice. with the idea. Nice. So, okay, cool. Uh, 
Well, when we record next, then yeah, we'll check in. Yeah, how this go? That's very cool. Well, stay tuned, folks. <laughs> I didn't scare the pants literally off you. Not at all. Not at all. I'm not scared. I'm intrigued. Awesome. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Project Relationship Podcast with Dr. Jolie Hamilton. And Ken Hamilton. If you're enjoying our conversation, we would be so grateful if you would drop a rating and quick review so more people will be able to find us. And if you have questions or suggestions that you of things you'd like us to tackle, please send an email to Jolie at JolieHamilton.com. I'd love to hear them. Project Relationship, the Entrepreneur's Action Plan for Passionate, Sustainable Love, is available on Amazon in Kindle, soft, or hardcover versions. This book is a succinct, practical guide to improving your love life. I wrote Project Relationship to give you a set of quick action tools and conversation guides that can transform a mediocre relationship into a fabulous one. These tools are based not just on what Jolie learned in her studies, but on what we actually do to make our relationship thrive. Until next time, remember, relationships can be messy, and that's good news.